When Alice Woodby was born in 1865 in Bridgewater, Pennsylvania, nobody could have imagined that later in life she would make medical history on two continents. Her parents died before she was seven years old. And many people don't know this, but for three years before she was seven years of age, she was blind. Whomever her guardians were put her into school, first the schools of Bridgewater, Pennsylvania, where she was born, and then she ended up at Hampton Institute. She then graduated from the Colored Normal School with a baccalaureate degree and went to the State Medical School for Women. By 1892, or later that year, she's in Augusta, and she goes to the Haynes Institute. The Haynes Institute is run by the fabled black educator Lucy Craft Laney, who's also a Georgia woman of achievement. She goes there as nursing instructor and resident physician, and at that time she was the first black female physician in Georgia. And, of course, in Augusta, she runs into whom? Cornelius McCain. And by 1892, they're having uh, announcements in the Savannah Tribune that Dr. Alice Woodby will soon become Dr. Alice Woodby McCain. The newlywed life for the McCains was busy, as they immediately teamed to develop a nurse training program for blacks in Savannah. Just four months after their wedding, an advertisement in the Savannah Tribune announced the first session of the McCain Training School for Nurses, beginning September 1, 1893. Alice and Cornelius made medical history, as the school was Southeast Georgia's first training school for nurses. Savannah was not a city that had much opportunity for African Americans in the early 1900s. The jobs for women were mostly as servants for men. It was hard labor. When one became ill or injured, the health care was probably next to nothing. When the doctors McCain came to Savannah, they changed that. They started by founding the Charity Hospital, which would be owned by African Americans and operated by African Americans. It would organize the health care of all the blacks in Savannah in a positive way, bringing in new equipment and bringing it literally into the 20th century. In Dr. McCain's era, only white health care providers could work with white patients. Black nurses and black physicians were confined to work with only black patients. Even the hospital buildings themselves were segregated by race. The era of segregation may have confined Dr. McCain, but it certainly did not define her, and that is impressive. They would get white doctors to visit the hospital and fill in and do internships and other things, and they made that a viable institution which reached and touched many, many people. Besides that, they built a viable nursing program that would work at that hospital, that would crank out nurses that would be working there. And for many years, the Charity Hospital, for well over 50 years, served Savannah's African-American population with a high degree of professionalism. Tuition was $4, uh, unless you were going to be a missionary in Africa, and then tuition was free, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. But graduated three nurses. The nursing program was designed as a two-year course for both males and females. Cornelius assisted with the school, but Alice was in charge and served as principal. Well, he remembered what his grandmother told him that one day to help his people in his ancestral homeland, which originally would have been Liberia had not his grandmother been spirited away with his mother. So they go to Liberia. And what do they do in Liberia? They set up a nursing school and a hospital in 1893. And I think he got involved in the politics there. It didn't go well. This lady has founded two nursing schools in two different continents. And that nursing school, not only was it a nursing school and a hospital, and a drugstore, all in one. So this is an amazing lady. The U.S. government appointed Alice a medical examiner for black Civil War veterans who had moved from America to Liberia. Their hard work in Monrovia brought them great rewards, but unfortunately, Alice contracted African fever and the couple was forced to return to the United States. On regaining her health, Alice opened a practice on Savannah's West Broad Street, specializing in gynecology and women's diseases. 
professional women of all races today can take a lesson of courage from Dr. McCain, we must still assert the same level of courage and determination as Dr. McCain did, not only in healthcare, but with her political activism related to the woman's right to vote. In 1893, they set up the McCain Hospital. It opens in November of 1896. And for a period of five years, they ran the McCain Hospital. In 1901, they passed over the hospital. They got funding from the county. They didn't want to be controlled literally by the powers that be, white people. So they say it was amicable, but they never practiced anymore in a charity hospital. And charity hospitals were the forerunner of community not-for-profit hospitals. And so her legend lives on in so many different ways, whether it's from a hospital perspective, a physician perspective, a nursing perspective. She was truly a pioneer in the medical field. Today the building is still there. It has been refurbished. It's part of a push by the Catholic Church to maintain housing for the low income in the Brownville area of the city. In 1909, Alice and Cornelius moved to Boston, where he died three years later. She continued her medical career and became an advocate for women's suffrage, an NAACP member, and a Republican committee woman. Cornelius McCain left Savannah because they say that their children needed a better education. And they had three children. She stayed in Boston, I would approximate, from at least 1909 until she died in 1948. So that's a period of 39 years. I guess in her spare time, whenever that would be, she wrote a book on medical history and then a book on poetry, which I think tells you the depth of this lady. Alice Whitby McCain is a special, special woman. She defied the odds around the time of the ending of the Civil War. Can you, you know, that's, that's incredible. So from the bottom of our hearts and on behalf of 150,000 nurses in Georgia, thank you, Dr. McCain, for your courage and your good example.